स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया welcome everyone uh, so today we are going to continue our study of method of characteristics so method of characteristics but we are going to characteristics and uh, we are going to do it for a quasi linear case okay quasi linear equation okay so let us look at uh, what sort of equation are we talking about so basically we we are talking about an equation which looks like this a of x y u ux plus b of x y u ui equals to c of x y u okay and u restricted to comma is let's say phi so this is the equation which is given to us and we call it a quasi linear equation because see this is a non linear equation i mean it's not a linear equation that's what huh? but the coefficient of a b and c this depends on it this may depend on u yeah so it's not a non it's not a linear equation but it's not a fully non linear equation it's just a quasi linear equation because it depends on u here also u and here also u right i want to solve this equation yeah so um, i want to study the well posedness of one so essentially in this case well posedness whenever i say i mean only the existence and uniqueness part okay so the existence existence and uniqueness of one that is what we need to understand okay so for first of all let us understand that given any equation like this can we always expect that there is a solution for it? okay so the question is this question given one okay can you always expect a solution expect a solution okay or a unique solution i mean first of all let's just understand that if we can expect a solution and then we can talk about uniqueness later right but the the answer is this do you think do you think we can expect any solution out of it no no huh? the answer is no why so the thing is you see so if let's take an, up an example and see see u t plus u x equals to let's say 0 yeah and u at the point x x is sin x let us take up this example this is a very very simple problem right to solve we already know that if let's say um, gamma and uh, phi yeah this is the initial data curve if you want to write it in terms of a parameterization this is r r sin r yeah this will lie on s which is graph of u graph of u i want to solve this thing yeah and uh, c of s is the characteristic curve characteristic curve huh? s is parameterizing the characteristic curve r is parameterizing the data curve so r parameterizing data curve data curve and s is parameterizing the characteristic curve characteristic curve right okay now let us solve this problem see you guys already know i mean i am not writing all these characteristic equations and all because you guys already can do that we saw it in the earlier classes u of xt if i just solve one let's say that's one and that's two if i just solve one what do i get u of xt is some arbitrary function of x minus t is a solution of one solution of one for f in c1 huh? for any f in c1 this is a solution now for u to solve two we have now let's say u solves two right now if u solves two u at the point x x is sin x so sine of x should be u at the point x t equals to x okay and then you have f of x minus x so that will give you 
f of 0 is sin x okay now do you think that can happen see f is for a if you want to write f f is an arbitrary function that is fine but for one solution f is fixed right so for a fixed f u of x t given by f of x minus t is a solution now f of 0 in that case will be a constant yeah f is a c1 function f at the point 0 is it's a function right so you just can take one value here and it's a constant and that is equals to a sin x you are writing and x is varying in whatever i mean in, let's say in r so that's a function this cannot happen right so a contradiction you understand so you cannot find a solution hence hence 1 plus 2 does not admit does not admit a solution okay let us understand what is the problem here see so just take one take 30 seconds and think about what is the problem okay see the problem is this let's say if i am putting u at the point x0 is sin x there was absolutely no problem you can just write it as sin of x minus t that's a solution here the problem is this what are the characteristic curves the problem is this let us explain what is the problem the problem is problem look at the characteristic curve what are the characteristic curves characteristic curves are given by x minus t equals to constant right those are the characteristic curves c is in r yeah see the initial data here is given along one of the characteristic so c equals to 0 x equals to t is a characteristic right x equals to t so x equals to t is a characteristic curve characteristic curve along which the data is prescribed prescribed right you understand see x equals to t so basically uh, same coordinate to x equals to t line on that line the data is prescribed and that is why what is happening is f of x minus f which is becoming f of 0 right and that is why that constant cannot be equals to function so essentially what is happening is here um, x equals to t is a projected characteristic sorry this is the projected characteristic curve right so the data is prescribed along one of the projected characteristics and that is why uh, what you have uh, that is why uh, you have this contradiction right so hence you cannot have the data prescribed along uh, projected characteristics so for here comes a concept of called a uh, concept which is called a non-characteristic data curve okay so non-characteristic non-characteristic okay so you see the thing is this what I meant by all of this is you cannot have data along any curve and expect the problem to have a solution you understand okay you need to have a data on a so the curve gamma so you understand the for the solution to exist the curve gamma must be a very special curve okay so let me write it like this we say we say okay uh, gamma of r okay which is gamma 1 of r gamma 2 of r yeah this is non characteristic is non characteristic curve okay if if gamma is nowhere tangent to the projected characteristic curves projected characteristic curves right yeah see uh, if gamma is one of the tangents so here uh, tangency is not coming because all of the projected characteristics are lines and the tangent to the lines are the lines itself okay so if gamma is nowhere tangent then we are good to go okay so essentially what this means in case of a so let me write it in this thing in case of a quasi-linear equation so what are the projected characteristics it is basically this gamma 1 of r gamma 2 of r okay e, u of gamma 1 of r gamma 2 of r which is phi of r in our case times b 
of gamma 1 of r gamma 2 of r phi of gamma 1 of u of gamma 1 of r gamma 2 of r which is this this okay this vector field times minus gamma 2 prime of r gamma 1 prime of r this is non zero is this clear see what is this this is basically i mean this is this particular thing is saying this is a normal thing right so this is basically saying that this particular projected characteristic curve projected characteristics are given by x prime y prime x prime is x prime is a y prime is b so it is basically saying that the projected characteristic curve okay sorry the non characteristic this curve the data curve is a non characteristic curve if the data curve is nowhere tangent it cannot be tangent at any point tangent to the projected characteristic curve so that is the relation so this dot gamma minus gamma 2 prime gamma 1 prime this has to be non zero clear yeah? and if this happens then you can show that um, so the existence and uniqueness theorem let me just write it uh, write down the existence uniqueness okay we will do the existence uniqueness later for now i uh, will just uh, um, give you a short uh, idea so essentially if gamma is non characteristic characteristic okay then then uh, the problem one the problem one admits an unique solution okay near uh, so let's say r naught is some point r naught zero okay so ac equals to zero near ac equals to zero you take any fixer uh, so let's say that this is your data curve gamma okay let's say that's the point r naught zero okay so uh, near the point r naught zero you can actually find a unique solution for this problem provided this gamma is a non characteristic so th this is the existence theorem huh? resistance and uniqueness and uniqueness theorem uh, we will do it properly uh, later but for now uh, i mean just uh, keep it in mind but uh, please understand that the unique solution is near r not zero okay so basically in some neighborhood here okay some neighborhood here okay now uh, so this is the case so let's say you are given a problem first of all how do you uh, solve a quasi linear equation so let us take up an example and see how do we solve it example let's say ut plus u ux equals to 0 okay and u at the point x 0 is x let's take this equation and let's see how to deal this with this problem so as usual gamma phi the parameterization will be given by r 0 r clear gamma phi is gamma is uh, gamma 1 of r gamma 2 of r okay and phi of r is given by r in our case okay so is the is the theta curve on s s is the graph of u what is u u is the solution of this problem okay the graph of u the surface is given by s and the data curve r 0 r is the uh, is lies on s okay so the characteristic equations what are the characteristic equations as i told you you see this is exactly in that form and we can use the whatever we have been doing up till now okay so x prime r s okay this will be with respect to s this is u and uh, so this is z uh, we will also define z of s to be u of x s y of s clear c along the curve whatever the height of u is okay x and y is in r2 u at the point x y that is the height so that is given by z so that is we are writing as z as like this so x prime is u huh? and u is z right so this is z and moreover x at the point r0 so at the point s equals to 0 what is the value which is r okay y prime r s is given by uh, sorry this is t prime r s t prime r s is given by 1 and t at the point r 0 this is 0 okay because r this is 0 okay 
and uh, Z prime R S is zero, and what is Z R S R zero? This is R. Okay, so that's your characteristic equations. Now I want to solve this equation. See, let's say this is one, this is two, and this is three. So solving three, what do we get? Z of R S is R. Z of R S is constant with respect to S. Clear? At the point S equals to zero, Z is R. So Z is always R for all S, right? So solving three, we get Z of R S is R. Now let let's put now putting it one, putting Z equals to R in one, we have we have X of R S is R. So, x of R s, if you just solve it, it is R s plus a function of R, right? And so, if you put this initial condition at the point R zero, this is going to be R. So, this is R s plus R. So, essentially, this is R s plus one. Okay. And similarly, what is T of R s? T of R s is s plus phi of R s plus some function depending on R. And since t of r zero is zero, so t of r s is essentially s. Okay. So please check this part. If you want, if you are not convinced, please check this part. Now, um, if you put this value here, therefore, what do you get? X of r s, you get it to be t is s. Okay. So r times s plus one. Okay. Uh, which is r times uh, t plus one. Okay. So here. The projected. Let's write down the projected characteristic. What are the projected characteristic? Characteristic curves. Okay. What are the projected characteristic curves? They are given by x equals to r t plus one. Okay. R is in r. So you see, projected characteristic curves here they look a little different. Huh? It depends on r. For now, let's take this initial condition to only depend. Only restricted to zero and one. Let's just put that. Huh? Let's see what happens. See here. So this R only varies between zero and one. Okay. Let's put this restriction and see what happens. I mean, without that also it's not a problem. So uh, in this case, what we will do is R will only vary between zero and one. Okay. Let's say zero and one. Yeah. I want to see what are the projected characteristics. So let's say the projected characteristic will be in x t plane, x t plane. Yeah. Let's see. So first projected characteristic corresponding to r equals to zero is x equals to r equals to zero is x equals to zero. Okay, so x equals to zero line, x equals to zero. This is one of the projected characteristic. Uh, I mean, maybe I can use a red uh, for this thing. This is a projected characteristic. Okay. Now the the other projected characteristics is um, see r equals to one let's say so x equals to t plus one huh? x equals to t plus one so something like this t equals to minus one this point huh? so this is x equals to t plus one this is another projected characteristic and if r varies between zero one and one all these projected characteristic every projected characteristic will lie here. We lie here. These are all straight lines. Huh? I am not very good at drawing, so you understand please. These are all straight lines, and this will all meet at this point, right? T equals to minus one. This will all meet at t equals to minus one. Okay, so these are all projected characteristics. So it will span the whole thing, and it will meet up here. Okay. Now the thing is, uh, let us write down the uh, what is the exact um, solution, and then we'll talk more about what is happening here. So the solution, and therefore, the solution is given by C. What is the solution? Z is R, right? Z is R. Okay. So Z U of x and y is U of x s y s, which is Z of uh, s, which is given by um, R, right? And R is x by t plus 1 okay that that's the solution so this uh, t 
obviously cannot be minus 1 otherwise this blows up right so t is greater than minus 1 okay so and this is evident from the projected characteristics see what is happening is this along the characteristics right along the characteristics z is r right so z is constant along the characteristic clear along the characteristic z is constant so just think of the graph above for every point here what is the value of z it is constant okay so here here every point is constant at this point what is the value of z it is let's say this point is 1 right for r equals to 1 okay so z equals to 1 here here also z equals to 1 then okay but again if you carry on along this line uh, z has a different value but along this line z is always constant so let's say this is r equals to half r equals to half okay so along this line z equals to half it's going 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 but when it reaches here what is happening it will be at t equals to minus 1 what do you think this will go you see uh, along this line if it goes at this point it will take half it should take half along this line if it goes it should take 1 okay so what is the value of z at this point or u at this point yeah there's a problem right i mean both the lines they will intersect somewhere but what is the value of u at the intersection at that point it is undefined because along two different characteristics you are getting two different values okay so and this is given by this you can see u is given by this okay so here you understand that uh, things are getting complicated in terms of um, when you look at the quasilinear equation so u of x y will sorry u of x t u of x t okay will be given by this so you understand that uh, at t equals to 0 at t equals to minus 1 the projected characteristics projected characteristic of meet okay and forms a singularity singularity okay later in the course we will talk about this singularity this is a very important kind of singularity we will talk about this singularity and we will see how to work around all this singularity okay so this will be done later okay so uh, now we want to talk about existence uh, theorem so essentially uh, what is so special about non characteristics we want to look at it into that so um, uh, we want to talk about existence right yeah, so existence theorem okay so um, what is the existence theorem so essentially let me tell you what is the um, exact idea so if the exact idea is to talk about this sort of thing f of x u gradient u equals to 0 yes and u restricted to gamma is let's say g this sort of thing is given f and g are continuous are continuous okay wherever they are defined i mean i am not writing all that it is continuous now this is a um, i mean very uh, this is a general format of a pd right so let's say that's your one and uh, we want to actually explain we want to see that uh, so f and g are continuous so the question is this question is when does one admit a unique solution and unique solution unique solution okay and whenever we uh, talk about solution we mean of course u is in c1 of omega whatever this uh, u will be defined c1 such that uh, it satisfies uh, this that u restricted to this gamma gamma is some curve uh, okay mm, that is equals to g yes and uh, of course i mean here you can think of this x so here we can think of this x is in from omega which is containing rn yeah we are restricting ourselves to r2 but the same exact same thing works for rn and uh, i mean there is nothing special about it okay and this gamma so this is the extra assumption x is in omega which is in rn and n is greater than or equal to okay and u restricted to gamma is g so what is gamma gamma see if you are taking your domain to be a open set in rn so gamma is any curve any 
smooth curve okay we are talking about smooth curve in rn such that gamma is the graph of some function okay graph of some phi so essentially what is gamma gamma sorry this is not a smooth this is a smooth surface sorry um, this is not a smooth curve in two dimension it is curve in three dimension it will be a smooth surface okay it's a smooth surface in rn such that u is equals to so basically you can think of u as a graph of phi where phi is from rn minus 1 to r okay so the graph of a function from rn minus 1 to r you think of that graph okay so that will give you a surface in rn right and the information of u is given on that surface and you are saying that you are looking for a function u such that when you restrict u on the surface gamma then you get this function g so this is in rn of course when it is r2 then essentially you are looking for a i mean the gamma is just a graph of some smooth function okay this is a smooth function this is smooth c infinity let's say c infinity function from r to r yes and uh, so the graph of um, phi so the, which is gamma will be a curve in that case okay a smooth curve which lies in r2 right and then i mean the usual thing happens so x is in r2 in that case okay right now the question is this so when does one admits a unique solution now uh, if you remember why are we suddenly talking about it because this is the this actually so this question, okay, so please understand this question, this question, okay, see, um, for a given problem, you want to talk about the well posedness of the problem, okay, and this question uh, covers, okay, covers uh, the first two part of, part of well posedness, well right okay now so we want to show, prove this thing and we saw that uh, i mean for any problem uh, yeah uh, so um, just a small revision okay so we saw that for any problem let's say ut plus ux equals to zero okay and u restricted to x and x is let's say sine x yeah this problem so there does not exist let's say no solution yes you can show that so it is not that uh, i mean it is it is not a like a guaranteed thing that uh, any problem like this will have a solution right i mean forget about uniqueness there may not exist any solution because the um, you know the data is given on the one of the characteristic lines yeah so what can we do about it uh, we talk about non characteristics right okay so um, let me give so essentially if you want to find a unique solution of some problem something like this yeah something like let's say one then we have to somehow take into account that non-characteristic condition so from there on itself we are going to talk about uh, the theorem which we uh, we deem as a uniqueness theorem okay so the theorem which we want to say is a uh, state is this so theorem theorem okay so this is the uniqueness theorem yeah? very important so it says that if gamma if gamma gamma is that uh, curve huh? gamma is non characteristic is non characteristic okay so what is the non characteristic uh, so basically gamma is a non characteristic curve essentially yeah non characteristic or surface whatever i mean for two dimension i'm just writing you can do it for n dimension also non characteristic Mm, for the Cauchy problem, for the Cauchy problem, okay, what is the Cauchy problem? For now, I am just writing it to, to as a quasi-linear problem or semi-linear, let's say, yeah, you can do exact same thing for a quasi-linear and a non-linear problem, okay. So, A of x, y, u, x plus B of x, y, u, y equals to C of x comma y and u restricted to comma is phi yeah so see here i'm just writing it for semi-linear you can also replace it with a quasi-linear or you can do it for a non-linear problem also 
correct so if gamma is a non characteristic for the cauchy problem you remember the non characteristic condition okay then one can find one can find a local inverse a local inverse of the function of the function g of r is which is equals to x of r is y of r is okay near is equals to zero clear so what it means is that is for each each r not yeah we can find we can find an open set open set v yeah containing containing r not zero and an open set and an open set u containing g r not zero what is g r not zero it is x r not zero and y r not zero what is x r not zero y r not zero which is gamma one of r not zero so it is gamma one of r not and gamma two of r not right okay um, such that such that such that g from v to u is bijective bijective moreover moreover uh, let me write here g inverse okay from u to v yeah, is c1 okay so essentially what it is saying if the non characteristic condition is given right you can actually confirm that a problem like this let's say that's your two a problem like this admits a solution but the solution so very important uh, please understand this thing so before we prove anything this is a small remark the above existence theorem above existence theorem okay theorem guarantees the existence existence of one unique solution right see it is saying that there is a neighborhood of r not zero where the solution is unique yeah unique solution but locally yeah? see it is not saying so let's say you are i mean think about this thing let's say uh, this is your domain right yeah so let's say the whole domain you are there and the initial data initial curve is this let's say that's your x-axis yeah let's say that's your x-axis this is your y-axis and uh, let's say that's your initial curve comma this is just an example yeah initial curve comma what this theorem is saying is for an arbitrary problem yeah if the non if gamma is a non characteristic right if gamma is a non characteristic for that problem then you can actually find a solution but not everywhere i mean you cannot say that the unique solution exists in the whole domain that's your domain right x y plane it may not exist in the whole domain but you can say that there is a small neighborhood let's say something like this okay this in this part of the domain okay small neighborhood i mean this is just an arbitrary uh, i just proved okay uh, there is a small neighborhood like this where you can actually i mean corresponding to this you have some u right and that will give you some small surface so you can have a solution which is unique yeah so you, which is unique and satisfies that equal problem yeah so it satisfies 
this problem u a u x plus b a u y equals to c and u restricted to gamma is free. u restricted to gamma is free only on this part okay only this, this so not in the whole gamma right so just this part of the gamma okay so let's say that's your r not zero okay so in a small neighborhood of r not zero you can actually say that there is a unique solution okay? you see near a c equals to zero near a c equals to zero so a c equals to zero c a c equals to zero let's say we start from here and let's say a c goes like this yeah so it is saying in a small neighborhood you can get that you cannot get it in everywhere in the domain okay so it's always local so please remember any existence you know most of the existence theorems are always local condition yeah right so now we want to prove this thing now how do you prove it so before we prove this thing uh, as you can see from the uh, statement of the problem uh, this has something to do with the inverse function theorem okay so let's talk about inverse function theorem okay so we need inverse function theorem to um, be used here so what does inverse function theorem says as you know that i mean inverse function theorem is one of the most cornerstone theorem in all of analysis okay it is probably the most important theorem in all of analysis so what it says is this so given a we basically are talking about a vector field right so let let uh, let's say f is from uh, omega subset of rn okay to rn be a c1 map c1 map right okay so you are looking at a obviously please remember inverse function theorem is always from the same dimension dimension is same rn to rn okay be a c1 map with df at the point p not not non-zero for some p not in omega okay so inverse function theorem what the gist of inverse function theorem is you are basically given a function c1 function you want to see whether there is a uh, inverse function inverse exists whether f inverse exists or not okay definitely this is not true for any given function right what inverse function theorem says is if the jacobian of f so if df p not df so if the Jacobian of the derivative of f at the point p0 is non-zero for some p0 in omega, then there exists u containing p0 and v containing f of p0, okay, such that, such that f from u to v is bijective and f inverse is in c1 okay so what it says is c if you are starting out with the f which is c1 yeah which you are starting with the f which is c1 now huh? very important then and if the jacobian at some point p not is non-zero if the jacobian is non-zero then what you can say is around that point p not you can have a neighborhood u and um, look at the image f of p not you have another neighborhood v such that f from u to v so you have to restrict f okay obviously u is contained in omega huh? okay so u um, let's say this this is a u which is contained in omega okay. u which is contained in omega and f of p not which is contained in p such that uh, when you restrict f to u okay from there f to v that is a bijective map so basically f inverse exists and moreover f inverse is also c1 okay so if you take f to be c infinity f inverse is c infinity if f is k ck f inverse is ck with this property obviously so this is important okay now let us uh, prove the theorem okay let us prove the existence theorem c so proof proof of existence theorem okay uh, before we go on the proof i mean if you guys don't know this theorem please read it it is very very important theorem and the proof of this you can get it in apostle apostle uh, mathematical analysis book okay this is okay please look at that book right so let us look at the existence theorem so for existence what we do is you first of all fix a r not in i whatever yeah um, in that uh, interval wherever you are taking the parameterization so fix r naught so what are we doing you see you fix r naught here okay 
so r not is the parameter r is the parameter okay you are parameterizing the initial curve right and r not is one of the point in that okay so you see we are defining and define it is already defined right so we are just writing it like this g of r s to be x of r s x of r s and y of r s right y of r s okay now therefore jacobian of g at the point r s okay what happens to this thing this is the determinant of course of x with respect to r x at with so this is xr of rs i am not writing all that huh? and this is xs yr ys i hope you guys know all this yeah and if you don't know please just read about it i mean this is not very difficult thing to understand the jacobian is given by you take the first component take, take the derivative of x with respect to r take the derivative of x with respect to s this is of course at the point rs yeah? i am not writing all that okay let me so this is at the point rs yeah? This is at the point R. Okay, so so this is given by x r y s minus x s y r. Right. So this is there. Now see at the point R not zero at R not zero. Let's say what happens. Jacobian of g at the point R not zero will be given by x r at the point r not 0 y s at the point r not 0 minus x s at the point r not 0 y r at the point r not 0 r not 0 okay now what is x r at the point r not 0 if you remember c x um, okay uh, first of all y s at the point r not 0 you remember what is y s at the point r not 0 c x s x s and y s x s and y s yeah? uh, at the point r s is given uh, okay so now what happens is there is a for this problem yeah uh, i have skipped a little bit you see for this problem given this problem you can talk about i mean just go as we have done up till now okay so um, you think of the characteristic curve which uh, which is parameterized by gamma okay the, um, so the gamma is parameterized by the characteristic curve and uh, you can write the characteristic equation right if you write the characteristic equation yeah what do you think uh, x s is x with respect to s okay that is a right and y with respect to um, s is b that we already know right so let let us write down the characteristic equation okay so um, this is there so we have to calculate this thing yeah let's say this is um, i don't know maybe star okay we have to calculate this thing now from characteristic from the from the characteristic equations equations one has one has xs at the point rs is a of x at the point rs y at the point r s right and y s at the point r s is equals to b at the point x r s and y at the point r s yeah this is the characteristic equation if you remember okay now this will imply this implies x s of r 0 this is a of x r 0 r 0 y r 0 okay and y s of r 0 sorry r not 0 r not 0 r not 0 okay so i am calculating at r not 0 this is b of x r not 0 y of r not 0 okay now what is a of x r not 0 and b of x r not 0 we have to understand that okay so you see this is a of r not 0 is this is gamma 1 of r and gamma 2 sorry r not and gamma 2 of r not right so gamma is parameterized if you remember it is gamma 1 of r gamma 2 of r right 
So at the point R naught, it's definitely gamma 1 of R naught, gamma 2 of R naught. Okay. And this is given by B of again gamma 1 of R naught, gamma 2 of R naught, right? Okay. Now, um, again, again, you see what is XR at the point R? So XR at the point R naught 0. What do you think that is? So X at the point R naught 0 is gamma 1 of R naught. So this is gamma 1 prime of R naught, right? And YR at the point R naught 0 is gamma 2 prime of R naught, right? Okay. So that is given. Now, if this is given, you just putting all this, putting in star 1 half, 1 half G R naught 0 is given by gamma 1 prime R naught, right? Gamma 1 prime R naught times B, B of gamma 1 R naught gamma 2 R naught right minus gamma 2 prime R naught okay a of gamma 1 R naught gamma 2 R naught right okay uh, you see uh, this is the start condition okay the Jacobian condition x r is y 1 prime R naught x y s is y s is uh, b of this so that is why I wrote it like this minus again this uh, calculation okay so that is there now you remember see this is the non characteristic condition okay now uh, and it is given to be non zero yeah non characteristic condition is this and it is given to be non zero so by inverse function theorem by inverse function theorem okay so this is non zero yeah it is given because gamma is a non characteristic and hence this happens yeah so by inverse function theorem um, we can find a uh, inverse there exists an inverse inverse of g of g near r naught and zero right because at the point r naught zero i mean this is uh, the jacobian is non zero so there exists a neighborhood of r naught zero okay and g of r naught zero where g is in i mean g inverse exists and g inverse is c1 okay so this proves that that if gamma is a non characteristic non characteristic non characteristic okay there exists a local inverse of g r s okay and this proves our theorem so let me just uh, end this uh, part by just saying this thing see uh, why a uh, local inverse is sufficient for this see uh, if you remember while solving this problem let's say why while solving a problem like this you are getting some characteristic equations for which you want to find you know x and r right i mean x prime x prime is this y prime is this z prime is this and um, you calculate what is x uh, y and z and that calculation will come in terms of r and s right yeah so and you understand that it is not always possible to invert those r and s so it is not always possible to write r and s explicitly in the form of x and y right and this is where the inverse function theorems comes so inverse function theorem says that of course it is possible to you know invert the theorem so invert r, of r and s in terms of x and y but the inversion is only possible and the unique inversion is all only possible in a local neighborhood okay in a local neighborhood of r naught zero so what it means is in a local neighborhood of the you know the initial curve okay r naught zero zero is s equals to zero right so near the initial curve we can actually say that there is a unique solution okay okay so with this we are going to and this part.